Can I read from verse 46? If not, I will read it and trust it will be clear enough for us all to hear and understand. So Mark chapter 10 and verse 46. Trust is a well-known story of a man called Bartimaeus. So Mark 10, verse 46, and it says this. And they came, that's the Lord Jesus and the disciples, and they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried to more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still. And commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. We need the reading there. We look to God to bless the reading of his word to us this afternoon. I just want to spend a few moments looking at this great miracle that we have read uh, together. You know, to read and to consider the miracles are a great way to learn more about the Lord Jesus, about who he is and why he came and the power that he has. And it's really easy to read through the miracles and perhaps we are familiar with them. And we just read them and don't take them, take much notice of them. We just take them for granted. But it's a great just to contemplate the awesomeness of the things that took place, things that had never been seen before, things that have never been seen since, miracles that the Lord Jesus Christ performed. So what is a miracle? I looked it up in the dictionary and it says this. It says it is an extraordinary and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore attributed to a divine agency. I thought that was quite good. Something that cannot be explained by science on nature things therefore that are impossible to be done by people therefore they can only be done by god or the lord jesus christ and as callum was just saying a minute ago who is god himself and the lord jesus he came on earth and he performed many miracles and he performed miracles for several reasons one of which was to show his love to the people he looked upon the people and he was moved with compassion he says he fed them, you'll be familiar with the feeding of the 5,000. He healed all those that came unto him. He also did miracles to prove to the people that he was who he said he was, the son of God. The Bible says that God approved him by the miracles, wonders, and signs that he performed. There was no doubt there was something different about this man uh, by the things that he did. But also these things were written down, the Bible says, so that we might believe that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing we might have life through his name. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ came and he went to that place which is called Calvary. And callan has been talking about that, that way how the Lord Jesus Christ made it possible for us to come unto God through his death upon that cross, for the sacrifice that he made. That was the ultimate purpose of why he came. But during this life when he came and he lived in those 33 years, he went about performing his miracles to show his love, to show that he was God, and therefore the only one who could deal with sin, but he was indeed none other than the Son of God. And what I want to do, just for a few moments, is to look at this great miracle that we have read. A bit of, bit of structure, I've got three headings for us, three R's, which might help us to remember. First of all, I want to look at the realization of the problem, the realization of the problem. We'll then consider the recognition of the solution, and then the remedy received. So we have the realization of the problem, the recognition of the solution, and the remedy are received. So let's start our passage and down at verse 46, the realization of the problem. And here we're going to join the Lord Jesus Christ and his disciples on a journey. They're heading down to Jerusalem. And the Lord Jesus is heading down to Jerusalem for the final time. You can read that in verses 33 and 34, how he tells the disciples they're going to go they're going to take him and they're going to crucify him. But it was for that purpose that he came. And therefore, he's going to take that path and he's going to head down uh, to Jerusalem. And as he's heading down, they come to this place, which is called uh, Jericho. And it says there that they came to that place, which is called Jericho. A great number of people came about. 
You see, wherever Jesus was, the crowds gathered together. They desired, they wanted to see him. A word was out about the Lord Jesus. They came and they listened to what he said and they marveled at the words he said. They said, never man spake like this man or something different about this man in the words that he said. They witnessed his miracles. That would have been amazing, wasn't it, to come and to see and to, and to be fed by the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ, to come if you were, you were sick and to be healed by him. These things had never been seen before. And so whenever Jesus was about the crowds, they gathered around to see him, to hear him, to even experience a miracle. And they came indeed to see uh, Jesus. And as they come, the crowds are gathering around and then we're introduced to this man called Bartimaeus. And we are told that he's blind. And we're told that he's by the highway and he's begging. You see, being blind 2,000 years ago is, was quite a, a difficult situation to be in. There was no benefit system or, or there's no way that he could support himself. And therefore, he had to resort uh, to begging. He would be rejected by society. They would look up, down on him. There's also the perception then that if you were blind, then it perhaps a curse of sin. God was punishing you. There was a question given to the Lord Jesus Christ about another blind man. And they said, well, who did sin, his parents or this child, that he was born blind? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, neither. You see, it wasn't because of the sin of Eva that he was born blind. And so the perception was, if you're blind, then, then you're destitute, you're rejected by society, you're rejected by God, even though that was not true. In a sense, he was without hope. It's a desperate situation for this man uh, to be found in. He's by the highway and he's begging. And you know, I'm sure... You're all familiar with the fact, as we talk from this place, no often, no doubt, that blindness is a great picture of something that affects us, something that Callum has been talking about even this morning. It is, of course, sin. The Bible says that the devil has blinded the minds of them that believe not. We are in spiritual darkness. We are spiritually blind if we're not a Christian, if we've not been saved. And you see, being blind affected every aspect of Bartimaeus' life. And that's the same as sin. It affects every part of life, whichever way we look, whichever way we turn. You see, we look at our lives, we look at the things that we do, the things that we think that are wrong. Perhaps the words that we say that are unkind. At times we disobey parents. We look around society, we read the newspapers. There's wicked things going around all the place. There is sin at every corner. Why we have sin, why we have disease, why we have sickness, why we have death, all these things are a consequence of sin. It affects everything and it gets in. And the reality is that sin affects us all. The Bible says, Romans 3, verse 23, and I'm sure perhaps some will be able to quote it, for all have sinned. There's no debate about that. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all fallen short of God's standard, God's standard, which is, of course, perfection. We have all fallen short of that. And we have all sinned and we are helpless we are helpless in regards to dealing with it ourselves just as Callum was saying we can't go to Anglesey without the bridge or the boat or whatever we are helpless we have to come another way and in our sins we are separated from God the Bible is really clear about that and if that is our position even this afternoon then we are in danger of judgment to come you know, the Lord Jesus Christ, a man of love and compassion, yet he spoke more about hell and the lake of fire than he ever did about heaven. Such is the seriousness of the matter of where you're going to spend eternity. And you see, the reason why it's in the Bible, the reason why Lord Jesus Christ spoke of it often, so that we could get an understanding of it, so we could realize the seriousness of it and get an understanding and therefore turn away from our sin. And turn unto God for a salvation. We are exalted to flee the wrath which is to come. We are exalted indeed to turn away. But we're only ever going to do that. If we get an understanding of the reality of sin. And that great gulf which is fixed between us and God. The realization of our problem. You see this man Bartimaeus. If he didn't realize he was blind. It's quite an obvious thing obviously for him. He's never going to seek to get it sorted. And that's exactly the same for our sin. If we don't realize the issue, the seriousness of sin, then we're never going to seek the solution to it. So the realization of the problem, what about the recognition of the solution? And so we have Jesus, he's passing through, the crowds are gathered, Bartimaeus is sitting there. 
And then he starts to cry out. Perhaps he's sitting there and he hears the commotion of the crowd coming towards him. Perhaps he's hearing those talking about Jesus is coming. That great man of, of the one of the man of the miracles. And then he comes and he hears and he cries out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth is where he grew up. You can read about that in Luke chapter 2. That is who he was, the man Jesus, the one who came from a Nazareth. And as he hears, Jesus is passing by. He would have heard of his miracles. And he understands this is my opportunity to get it sorted. And so he cries out, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You see, he knew Jesus was passing by and he understood who Jesus was. And he also understood who he was himself. You see, by calling out Jesus of Nazareth, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He really knew who the man was. Yes, he knew his name was Jesus. He knew he was from Nazareth. And he knew that he was the one who could heal him of his blindness. He could give him sight. But he had a deeper understanding. He knew that by calling him the son of David, he knew that this was the one that was foretold of old. The one whom God would send to be the Messiah. He had the understanding of who the Lord Jesus Christ was. And that is vitally important for us. If we ever want to be saved, if we ever want to come into the presence of God, we need to get an understanding of who the Lord Jesus Christ is. You see, you ask people today, and many will say, yeah, he's a great man, a man of history, perhaps a good teacher, a moral man. Maybe some would even say he was a prophet. But he's so much more than that. And as Callum was, was saying earlier on, that he was indeed the son of God. But more than this, he was God himself. Callum quoted that verse, that great is the mystery of God. And as God was manifest, God was seen in flesh. The Lord Jesus Christ could say that he that has seen me have seen the Father. I and my Father are one. And if we ever want to be saved, we need to understand and believe of a truth. That the Lord Jesus Christ is God in flesh. The one who came down indeed to deal with sin once and for all so this man he had a right understanding of who the lord jesus christ was but he also had an understanding of his own position of who he was as well but not only did he cry thou son of david but he cried have mercy on me he was saying have compassion on me i'm not worthy of your presence i'm not worthy of your love i'm not worthy of your compassion have mercy on me he understood he was not worthy. He understood his helplessness. And he came to Christ to meet him in his need. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, he's told us of another story of these two men. They're in the temple. And there's one, he, he's standing up in front of everybody and he's praying to God so everyone can hear. And he's thanking God. He says, I, I fast, I give thanks, and I give to charity and all these things. And there's a man in the corner he wouldn't lift up his head. He's, he's on the floor prostrate and he's saying, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. And the Lord Jesus said, that man who was on the floor crying, have mercy on me. He went away justified. God saved him. You see, that man crying in front of everybody didn't have a right view of who God was or himself. That man on the floor, he understood who God was. He understood himself that he needed mercy. He needed compassion. He needed to be saved. He went away justified. And if we ever want to be saved, if we ever want to have our sins forgiven, then we need to get a right view of who Christ is. His majesty, his glory, his sinlessness. The fact that he is God, and we need to get a right understanding of who we are. In his presence, we are sinners. We are helpless. And so he crying out. And the people, they told him to be quiet. Uh, they didn't have any compassion. They didn't have a right view of who Christ was. They just thought Christ wouldn't be interested in this beggar, this blind man, and they begged him to be quiet. But you see, he was undeterred. And he's crying out. The word there, it says, the cry, the more, the idea that he's screaming at the top of his voice. This was his opportunity. He desired, he needed, and he wanted to be heard by the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's crying out to be heard. And then, verse 49. It says, Jesus stood still. I mean, that's incredible to think. You read those words. When we think of who the Lord Jesus Christ is, the one who created all things, 
the one who sustains all things. The, the heavens and the earth are all sustained by him. And in a moment of time, he stands still. He's heading down to Jerusalem. He knows that the cross of Calvary is before him. The burden of that is weighing heavy upon him, and yet he takes time out to stand still and to commune with one man. You see, the Bible says that God sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, and that is true. But he came to be the Savior of individuals, such as you and I. And Jesus stood still, and now, no doubt, the crowd, they stopped. I'm sure there would have been a hush upon that crowd. Now they're intrigued. They want to see what Jesus is going to do. And Jesus stood still and he commanded him to be called unto him. And the crowd now turned. They say, be of comfort, be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. Now they're intrigued. Now they have compassion. Now they want to see what's going to happen here. You see, he's crying out. Jesus stands still. And he asked him to come over to him. And so the man, he realized he was blind. He recognized that Jesus was the solution to his answer. And now he's going to receive the remedy. You see, the attitude changes at the command of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he gets up. He says he cast away his garment. He rose and he came to Jesus. This was his opportunity. He was not going to miss it. And so he casts away his garment, his, his begging clothes, his sign of his, uh, of his old life, and he comes to Jesus. And the Lord Jesus asks him a question. What will that that I should do unto thee? You see, he come as he was, and that is vitally important for us. We need to come and we need to disregard our sin, be willing to turn our sin away from our sin and turn unto God. The Bible calls that repentance. That's what we need to do. Turn away from sin, turn unto God. Accepting there is nothing we can bring of ourselves. You know, people, they try to do their own thing, don't they? Again, Callum was saying, we try our own efforts. We, we try our own different ways. Good works. Giving to charity, reading our Bible, all things that are good, but nothing of these will save us. We need to disregard sin and come unto him. The hymn writer says, nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. There's nothing we can pay. There's no thing we can do. The work has been done. The Lord Jesus Christ had paid the price upon the cross at Calvary. And so he came just as he was, and he heard the question, what will I do unto thee? And he asked the question. And maybe you think that's an obvious question. He's blind. He's crying out for mercy. And the Lord Jesus says, well, what do you want me to do for you? You see, the Lord Jesus Christ is never going to force his way into anyone's life. He will stand and he will offer the invitation, come unto me. I will give you rest but he's never going to force his way in to anyone's life. We need to come. And anyone that comes unto him, he will no wise cast out. He's not going to turn anyone away. He has never turned anyone away who come unto him. And this man, he says, Lord, again, he had right appreciation of who Jesus Christ was, recognized him as Lord. And he says, I might receive my sight. Quite simple. He had a problem. He came to Jesus, and Jesus met him in that need, and he gave him sight. But he said, go thy way, thy faith have made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ heard the man's request, and he healed him. That man, Bartimaeus, he came unto Jesus believing that he would heal him, and he asked him, and he was. He put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he was saved. He says immediately he received his sight. That's a wonderful thing. I don't know how long this man was blind. Maybe from birth, maybe a few years. But what a wonderful thing that would have been, that blind man, to, to open his eyes and to behold the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful thing that would have been for him. And it's wonderful to think for all those who put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That one day we will see his face. The hymn writer says, face to face shall I behold him. To close our eyes in death and to open them in glory and to behold 
the blessed person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who loved us and the one who gave himself for us. That is the hope that we have as believers, those who put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. But more than that, the Bible says that we shall be like him, but we shall see him as he is. And I wonder if that's your hope, even this afternoon, the hope of seeing the risen Lord as our savior and not as our judge. And what a privilege this man had to see the blessed person of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you see, it took him took faith. The Bible says, the Lord Jesus Christ said, thy faith have made thee whole. You see, it takes faith to believe. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It is the word of God that we read. It is the word of God that we present so that you may hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. You may hear about your sin and the, the seriousness of it and understand the way of salvation, which is through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The fact that he died upon the cross he paid the price for sin and God raised him on that further appointed day as evidence that he was satisfied that sin was dealt with once and for all. That doesn't save you. Bartimaeus knew he was blind. He knew Jesus could heal him off his blindness. He could make him see he was not seeing yet. The same for sin. We might know that we're sinners. We might know that Jesus Christ had paid the price for sin. It does not save us. Bartimaeus needed to come and to ask. And that's the same for sin. If we want to have our sins forgiven, if we want to come into a living relationship with the Almighty Creator God, if we want the assurance of heaven and a day to come, then the price has been paid, but we need to come in faith. Confess our sin and ask God to save us. And if we do that, then we will be saved. And we will be saved immediately. And we will be saved forever. This man, he received his sight immediately. He didn't need a, a course of medication. He didn't need ointment for his eyes for a period of time. A dealing with the Lord Jesus Christ, and he was immediately seen. He received his sight. That is the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we come confessing our sin, we will be saved immediately. There's no course to be done. There's no additional works that we need to do. We are saved for time and for eternity, and we are saved immediately. Again, that is the wonderful power of the Lord Jesus Christ. The price for sin has been paid. If we come in faith, confessing our sin, asking to be saved, then we shall be saved. And this man, he was healed. And it says he followed Jesus in the way. You see, salvation is just the start. If we come and confess our sin and come into a living relationship with God, then we are saved. Praise God for that. We are saved and salvation cannot be taken from us, but we need to follow him in the way. We need to be obedient to what God has commanded. We have the word of God in front of us. We are told that if upon salvation, we should be baptized. We need to declare to others round about our profession, that what we have done uh, privately with Christ, to associate ourselves with a local church, uh, to witness, to tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ, to be obedient unto him so that we might bring him glory in all that we do. Now, indeed, this man, he followed Jesus in the way. And that is a challenge for all those that will come in repentance and put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He will heal us. He will save us. And we need to follow him in the way. So in closing then, as we bring it to a close, he realized his problem. He was blind. He recognized that the Lord Jesus Christ was passing by and that he was able to deal with his blindness. He was the solution. And he received the remedy for he received his sight. What about ourselves? Do we realize the issue of sin in our lives? The issue of sin that separates us from God and if never dealt with will keep us separated from God for all of eternity. And if we realize the issue of sin, do we recognize that the Lord Jesus Christ is the solution, the only solution? He has died upon that cross and dealt with sin and satisfied God, a holy God, in regards to sin once and for all. And will we come for the remedy? Will we come and put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, asking for salvation. I trust we will consider these things and leave God to bless what these things that have been said this afternoon. And indeed, that might be a challenge to each one of us. And if there is any this afternoon that as of yet are not saved, I take serious consideration of the things that have been considered this afternoon. And let us close now with a word of prayer and give thanks for the fruit.